All right, guys, so I've caught up to the Seven Deadly Sins, a.k.a. Nanatsu no Taizai again. I know I haven't reviewed it in a while. I'm going to have a big video right now talking about everything that I've missed out on. I don't necessarily know if I'm going to go back to reviewing it weekly or talk about a chapter that I find interesting from time to time or do these type of videos. It honestly just depends, but we'll see how it goes. Let's jump into what's been going down in this series. So pretty much we've been having this flashback-esque type of arc right now where we're going back to the old war whatever i say flashback-esque because we have diane inside of dolores body and we also have king inside of gloxinia's body so it's a little bit different i'm assuming than what actually happened but i don't think they have a big role or a major role in the war and that's why they're kind of interacting with these characters in a way in this weird flashback segment but they're not going to overall change anything major and of course this is a big test that the real Delore and Gloxinia are using to see if these two are worthy to carry on their legacy, I guess, or their ideals for that matter. So one of the big things since we last left off, Elizabeth was originally a part of the Goddess Clan, and that honestly explains quite a few different things. For starters, it explains why Derriere, or we're going to call her Take It From The Ass, because I love that nickname, why she basically hated not only the Goddess Clan, but also kind of recognized Elizabeth and had extreme hate for her based on the latest chapter is like oh shit so this Elizabeth thing which kind of goes all into what I've been thinking for a while now that Elizabeth has been reincarnated time and time again who knows how many times Meliodas has had to see her live and die I mean there was Liz as well which wasn't an identical replica of Elizabeth but nevertheless Meliodas has probably seen this woman die quite a few different times and I'm imagining of course she dies as well in this war against the demons and that's how she's able to be reborn looks as though shit is about to go down and honestly it seems as though from what I've got gathered from everything it, it seems really obvious that the true villains are the goddess clan i mean aside from elizabeth being the only decent one out of the goddess clan it looks as though the goddess clan are the true main antagonists or the true main villains of this story because they're the ones that antagonize the demon clan to begin with they're the ones that's talking about they want to eradicate the demon clan opposed to the demon clan they're, they're just like yo leave us the fuck alone we'll fuck you up leave us alone already so it seems as though the true main villain of everything is the goddess clan especially that main leader of the goddess clan like that dude is a fucking piece of shit and it's like you have Meliodas there that betrayed the demon clan and is working with all the other clans to kind of you know stop this war and the goddess clan is like nah he's demon scum fuck him too so the goddess clan is truly like you can see as a case of I'm assuming prejudice and maybe something deeper because we don't know exactly what makes the goddess clan hate the demon so much whether it be that maybe they lost a couple relatives and like some small thing that happened but of course just because some small events happen or because you particularly lost a loved one to somebody from that clan doesn't mean that you need to wage war and eradicate all of them but we don't really know exactly why they hate the demon clan they just really do also interesting that gloxinia can see helbrum because nobody outside of king when he has the helmet on can see helbrum so it's kind of interesting that gloxinia can see him as well i don't know if that's going to have any bearing to be honest with you it seems as though helbrum's just around for the sake of being fan service because a lot of people like him because other than that it's like what really relevance is he having anymore to this story since his true passing even though he's still you know somewhat around as an illusion so that that was just kind of bizarre and at the end of the day again it's like Helbrum it's not really serving any purpose again aside from time to time just talking with King here or there but can't even talk to him right now because he's in that trance of this flashback and you could definitely see Elizabeth she's had a way with words even from her original you know person that she was because seemingly she was able to talk the demons out of going into war she did it before with the original demons that came forth and she talked them out of it and then she even was almost capable of doing it with the main Ten Commandments. So it shows that Elizabeth, even though she throughout the series was kind of trying to find her way in a sense of like, what purpose does she serve? What can she really contribute to the Seven Deadly Sins in their battles against like, you know, the Demon Clan and everything that they've had to go through? Well, her being from the Goddess Clan already is one big plus, right? Especially the little inklings we've seen of her powers, but also the fact that she has, maybe it is a power, maybe it's a power to reason with people on a more mental level, some sort of like not genjutsu but maybe it makes them see eye to eye and trust her so that's possibly one big thing as well that she can contribute to anything that the seven deadly sins go through and it's good to see that she's not just a damsel in distress especially you know how the series started off with her looking for them please help me or whatever it seems like she definitely has a little bit more to contribute knowing her roots with the original elizabeth and is it just me or does it feel like roe is the true ancestor to bond now to be honest with you where we're at in the manga right now it seems as though he's probably gonna die really soon protecting Gara, 
Gloxinia's sister anyway, that we found out that that's actually Gloxinia's sister. He's possibly going to die, and then also her thinking that Gloxinia died is going to make her go into that funk that she is, because she's a totally different character in this flashback from the one that we know in the current timeline. She's like, you know, depressed in our timeline, just a drag, and this one, she's perky and cheery, and that's probably because while Roe is protecting her, Roe is probably going to die, and then of course she thinks her brother dies, and that's probably what sets her on this path to being this miserable bitch. But, who knows, maybe throughout this little event or whatever, even though literally it's just been like a few minutes since they said, oh yeah, protect her, and he's like, no problem, maybe that's how Bond's ancestry begins, because Roe impregnates this woman, and then it continues on from there. I'm grasping at straws, but again, it definitely seems as though that's the ancestor, because even his relationship with Meliodas is like, he accepts him, and they're friends, and they look like they could be best friends if they were around long enough, so I think that that's truly, in some way or another, spiritually, at the very least, the ancestor to Bond. And I'm kind of curious exactly what is it that Gloxinia and Delore are looking for within King and Diane, you know, taking part, in a sense, in this flashback. Is it that they want to see if they're going to make the same choices? Is it that they want to see that they're good people? Or is it that they want to see that they make better choices than what they made? Because we don't exactly know what Gloxinia and Delore's roles were in the past war. We only know that, you know, they went ham and supposedly they died and so much other crazy shit happened, but we don't know the details. Maybe they want to see if Diane and King will do things differently in a better way and things will turn out better. So they'll be like, okay, you know what? You guys, we made the right decision. You guys can make better decisions than us. We're going to fucking help you guys get to where we're at and even beyond so you can fight the Ten Commandments. And if I'm not mistaken, it was one of those people from the Goddess Clan that was summoned by that one guy. I can't remember the dude's name, but I remember there was one Goddess Clan angel that was summoned, or she looks like an angel. She was summoned, and then she got cut in half real quick, and the whole thing ended. I think one of those is them. So one of the big questions, because it seems as though there's a little bit of false suspense, to be honest with you. I mean, at the end of the day, we know where all of this is headed the demon clan or at the very least the ten commandments are going to get sealed we don't really know exactly what happened to the goddess clan we can assume a lot of them died or they got sealed themselves because again how was that guy able to summon one of the goddess clan so we don't know what happened to the goddess clan but overall we know they're going to clash and the demons get sealed none of them is going to die so there's a little bit of false like the creeping up oh suspense what's going to happen we know more or less what's going to happen but i'm kind of curious what happens to the goddess clan i think that's the most suspenseful part it's like okay do they all die and get sealed or is it that majority of them die and one of the last people standing he uses his magic to seal the demon clan away and then dies like that's what I'm kind of curious for so I guess the suspense mainly lies in exactly what happened to the goddess clan during this war and we also found out that the lord of the goddess clan is seemingly as strong or even beyond the ten commandments so he's probably going to be knocking their asses out again nobody's going to die because we know that they're all sealed but he's going to be kicking some fucking major ass and I wouldn't be surprised if at some point in this timeline he gets resummoned because we've seen that the goddess clan can get summoned forth to this you know timeline or whatever so i wouldn't be surprised if he actually shows up because again he looks like he's the true mastermind of all this he's the one that stirred up the demons kind of antagonized them made them go to war and especially in the latest chapter what happened when they used elizabeth to kill off a bunch of the demons clan people like automatically right there that's like the red flag of that's why everything happened the goddess clan antagonized them so again true villains are the goddess clan they're pieces of shit why they're doing it? Is it just random prejudice? Is it something more? We don't know. And I mean, overall, I don't think that this flashback is going to last too much longer. I'm imagining at the most another you know, month of chapters, maybe three or four chapters, because it looks as though we're already about to clash. And again, they don't seem to be dragging this out. Like, even though I really enjoyed it, the Alma Tehran arc of Magi, you know, that went really slow paced. It seems as though they're cutting it. You know, here it is. This is what happened. And eventually we're going to get back to the main timeline. So I'm totally fine with this flashback. It's actually been pretty interesting, but again, more so the suspenses on what happened to the goddess clan and the details with Meliodas and Elizabeth. I'm assuming that Elizabeth dies there and that's what sets forth the path of Elizabeth dying, Meliodas finding her and continuing on and if that happened for thousands of fucking years, poor Meliodas, I mean what the fuck, how do you go through that for thousands of years or even hundreds of years or just years in general, what happened with Liz, it's like fuck. What is your thoughts on all this though? How do you feel about the Goddess Clan? You think they're the overall main villains of the story? I do think that Nakaba said that he's going to have three major arcs. We had the first one with good old Hendy Boy and all that shit, and then this is the second one. Do you think that the final arc is going to be fighting the return of the Goddess Clan, and this is just a setup for that? Like, we'll fight the, you know, Ten Commandments, and then we're going to go into the Goddess Clan, or what do you think is going to happen with that? Do you think we're going to see Lord Ryudo Shell, the main Goddess Clan leader? Because again, if he shows up, it's going to be fucking all hell breaking loose, because it's like, 
like he's even stronger than the Ten Commandments. Well, at the time he was. I don't know about now. Any overall thoughts of all this? Do you think that Ro is truly the ancestor to Bon, or it just seems like a coincidence because he's from the human clan? And are you enjoying this portion of this arc that we're in right now in the Seven Deadly Sins with this flashback of Gloxinia and Dolores sending King and Diane to check out what really happened? But that's all I have for this one. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you liked anything I had to say or enjoyed the video, drop me a like. I'd greatly appreciate it. And if you want more from me, make sure to subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and stalk my Facebook to get more when the video ends. I'm Forever World, and as always, people, have an awesome day. Mm -hmm.